Hey people, so this is going to be my attempt at a program guide for space engineers in game programming. Um, yeah, I am not a professional programmer, I have very limited experience with C Sharp, uh, really I don't have any apart from space engineers, so take that in mind. I'm basically gonna get people up to the same level as I am at. Um, hopefully. So yeah, we have all probably, even though some of us have not done scripts, looked at the scripts in the programmable block and thought what the heck is going on. Um, this is a program language called C Sharp. It is, I think, what Space Engineer is written in uh, to begin with. And it can be a hassle, especially when we're in here in this environment because we got zero help. Um, you either gotta remember everything, or copy paste, or have some lookups on a secondary screen, and that's just a hassle. So what I'm gonna start off with is showing you how to install an uh, uh, external third-party development environment, which will help you greatly. So what we're gonna get is we're gonna start off by getting the Visual Studio Community 2019 IDE. Um, that is where we're going to be writing our code. So both the links for this and the plugin we're going to need are in the description below. So we're going to open the install, press continue. It's going to download a bit. Um, the whole installer is online, so it may take a different amount of time depending on your internet connection. Before we click install, we're going to go into individual components and check .NET Framework 4.6.1 SDK and the .NET Framework 4.6.1 targeting pack. Now we can press install and continue. We're not going to add any other workloads because we only want to do space engineers programming for now. Again, may take a variable amount of time. Right, once you're done you should be here. You may be stuck on uh, having to log in from Microsoft account if that is the case. You're just gonna have to log in. That's the way it is with this uh, free stuff and all that. So uh, we're gonna close this down and go to the second link, which is the MDK SE made by Malware, which uh, he's an amazing guy making amazing stuff. And this has made my life a ton easier at least. So we're gonna click the, the first link up here. That's just gonna be the newest version. And down the bottom, we can select MDK.VSIX. That is the plugin we're going to need for Visual Studio to program space engineers. Well, you can do it without it, but it makes it a lot easier. So we're going to click it to install. It may disappear down here. And it's going to complain about missing C Sharp and Visual Basic, but it will install that by itself. So we're just going to press install. And it's going to do its thing again. Some downloads may take a variable amount of time. So we're going to go down and find it. Visual Studio 2019. Once it's up and running, we can create a new project down here. We're going to select end game script. Next. Now you can choose a name for set scripts. I'm just going to leave it at the standard one. Create and it's going to pop up with this window. If these are blank, then uh, you're going to need to fix that. This one up here needs to point to the binaries of the game. Uh, so space in years dash uh, bin 64. This down here is where you want the scripts to be output. And it needs to be this folder to be accessible in game. Depending on how you want to do this, it may not be necessary. I usually leave these two checked off. This one removes stuff you have defined that isn't used anyways to save some space. But only if you used... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get to that. Uh, and this one will minify the code when exports. The last one here is that if you publish your script on a workshop, it will include a thumbnail of MDK's logo to show... Uh, give him some publicity, which he very much deserves for creating this plugin. It's great. Anyhow, create a new project. And here we go. Now, I am recording in 2K here, so I'm actually uh, unsure whether you'll be able to read any of this. 
Alright, that should be a bit more readable for those still running 1080p screens, which I think is the majority. So yeah, now we have our initial script, our template, as it was. So the thing the plugin does is primarily give us this, well, for me at least primarily. It is the, the, the starting position here. It also gives you a link with a lot of very useful resources for spacing this programming. I could highly recommend using that. And yeah, I'm just gonna delete this. I'm gonna post the script in the description as well. So our end game script is basically anything from here. to here. Everything else is just needed for this to work for programming inside Visual Studio. So the first block here is called program. It is run every time you load the game, every time you recompile the script. And uh, it is very useful for things you want to do once, like uh, declaring things and connecting well, connecting a block to an object, I'm gonna explain what that's about in a second. Uh, but yeah, stuff you want to run once during the script's lifetime. The next one is save. I'm gonna go into that in a future video, I think, because uh, basically it will run every time you save the game and you may want to do something special when that's the case. And as I said, I'm gonna go into that at a later point. The last one, we're going to delete that. You can also delete the program up here, by the way. Um, the last one is the main loop. It is necessary. Everything inside that is what is run when you say run on the programmable block. So that is the one that is actually important. Right, so how do we uh, access stuff in game? What do we do? So I'm going to delete all the screen text. I'm going to leave, leave this. I usually like doing this with from here to here because I like to copy paste my code into the game. So I just select this and copy paste it. Right, so a classical thing to do when writing your first script is doing a hello world or a flash and LED kind of script. So we are gonna turn on a lamp and we are gonna write hello world on a screen. So to access a block we're gonna need to create that block in our scripts. Most blocks start with I my, so I M Y, and then whatever it is. As you can see, we have advanced doors, air vents, stuff like that. I want a light, I want an interior light, so I'm going to type interior, and there it comes interior light. I can now select that and press enter. I'm going to need to call the object we are creating here something, so I'm just going to call it lamp. And I'm going to finish off with a semicolon. You're going to want to do that every time you finish a line. That is how the programming, well, the compiler knows that you are finishing your line. Now I have an object here, a lamp, interior lamp object. Um, I can do whatever I want with that, as I can do with a lamp in game. But it is not, it is just inside my code. If I manipulate it, nothing will happen. So we're going to have to link that up with our lamp in game. So what I'm going to do down here is write a really long line of text, but bear with me. So I'm going to say that lamp is equal to grid terminal system get block with name. And that name is interior light s uh, s I my interior light. So what I've done here, I've taken this object here, which is an interior lamp, and then I've set that it is equal to, so what I'm stuffing into the box up here is I'm taking my grid terminal system, which is the grid I'm on, the grid the programmable block is on. So one spaceship is a grid, another spaceship is another grid, and so on. Uh, so on that grid, I am taking the block with the name interior light. I am treating that as an interior light and stuffing it into this object. So now lamp is equal to that physical object in the game world. Whatever we do to it here will happen to it in the real world. So if I go down here in my main, the part of the code that is run when I say run on 
the programmable block and type lamp period I will get a list of actions I can apply to this lamp and the list is long so uh, I am gonna take something as simple as turning it off there is an action called enabled so let's just start with E and A there we go enabled and you can see out here that it is get or set that means that I can manipulate this value I can both read what is it now and I can also set it to something and it says over here that it's a bool a bool uh, or a boolean means that it's true or it is false so is it enabled or is it not it's like an on off button so I'm gonna say lamp enabled is equal to false so when I run this code in a programmable block it should turn off the interior light called interior light so let's try it out I'm gonna copy paste this and I'm gonna put it in my game and yeah so into the programmable block we go we say edit I'm just gonna control A to select everything control V to paste OK and press run now we get an error here called exception so this is annoying usually because it doesn't really say what the exception is well it does but it doesn't make sense at least to me anyhow in this case we know what's wrong well, I know what's wrong we don't have an actual interior light we are trying to access a block with name interior lights but we don't have any so I'm just gonna place one here there we go now we are gonna recompile our code down here and press run and there we go it turns off the lights next up uh, we're gonna get the hello world kind of deal so we are gonna access an LCD on a block I'm gonna pick a we could just pick an LCD but I'm gonna pick cockpit because that's a bit of a special case when it is a block and not an LCD so I'm gonna place this here now we're gonna go back to our code here we need to add the cockpit but we don't need we don't want to add it as a cockpit because we want it as a text panel or well something that has text panel so I'm gonna say I my text surface provider that means a block that provides text surfaces like the LCDs inside the cockpit and I'm just gonna call it cockpit and as with the lamp I'm gonna add it in the same way so I'm saying cockpit whoops I made a mistake up here always and with a semicolon cockpit equals grid press press enter to get that get block with name and so again and with the name cockpit this name is case sensitive so if I you don't capitalize probably it's not gonna work and again we're gonna say as I my text surface provider not as an a cockpit because there's also um, there's also one called cockpit but that is for accessing the actual cockpit as a block not as something with text surface right now I have that now I want it to say hello world on some of the screens so as with the lamp we can do cockpit dot and we get a small number of options here now surface count will just put out a number how many surfaces are there there's not a lot we can use that for get surface will get a specific surface as you can see it is get surface int index that means it's a whole number something between zero and whatever number you can think of but no decimals and that basically means we get surface number whatever number we put in as with most programming the index starts at zero so we're gonna say zero for the first uh, surface and if we do another dot we get a ton of options and I don't really want to get into all of them so we're just gonna write some text the bottom one so if we say write text there we go now we're gonna need to initialize a string like with get block name up here 
it is start a parenthesis, a couple of quotation marks, end parenthesis, and semicolon. So whatever text we write in here will be put on surface zero in the cockpit. So I'm going to type hello world. Hello world. Now, as a bit of an extra, let's just say, let's add a new line, so backslash n, uh, on screen 1. Oh, let's keep with this index over here and call screen 0. So I'm just gonna, basically I'm gonna copy paste this whole thing. Because I want to do it on a couple of extra. So we're gonna index that with 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. So again, we can copy paste it into the game, and I think this is a good way, time to show you the second method of getting a script in game and that is to go up to your solution up here right click it say mdk deploy all scripts this will take a little while and that is why i usually don't use it because i think it's way faster just to copy paste but if you want to publish your script on the workshop or something like that this is the way to go here we go now it is published so it is called in game script 15 if I now go into Space Engineers, go into the programmable block, say Edit, and say Browse Scripts, we will have it in here. Um, and I can double click it to load it, and it is in. So I press OK. And let's get into our cockpit here. We need to set the screens to accept something from the programmable block. Ironically, usually, it is set to script, but that actually means that it's running some of the stock scripts and not from a programmable block. So I'm going to set it to text and images. And I'm going to do that with all of them. That way we are able to um, yeah, that way we are able to throw text over there from the programmable block. Right, so now we have a bunch of blank screens. We are going to run the programmable block, run, and hello world on screen 0, 1, 2, and 3. So yeah, we have done hello world, we have turned off a lamp, and that is going to be it for this time for me. Um, I have a lot, a lot more, a lot more I want to go over, um, but I think this video has already become long enough and I really want to get some feedback because there may be something I'm taking for granted and that, that other people just simply don't understand. So I really need to get some feedback before I proceed on this little project of mine. Uh, so anything constructive, be it negative or positive, you can come up with, throw it in the description below. Um, what I'm going to do in the future... Uh, I want to do, introduce some conditional logic, so basically make the program able to make some decisions. I'm going to introduce groups, how to access an entire group of blocks. Uh, also do some stuff with uh, keyboard controls, accessing uh, basically the, the movement indicator of the cockpit. And generally just some of the examples I have used in some of my earlier builds, how it's set up and stuff like that. But yeah, feedback, please, and thank you. So, I hope this was useful. I appreciate you watching, so thanks, and see ya.